Warning. Viewer discretion is advised. This channel and its content are not intended for anyone under 13 years of age. If you are under 13, please turn off this video. The following may contain material not suited for viewers under 13, such as coarse and suggestive language, tobacco, drug, and or alcohol references, simulated slash fantasy violence, and adult situations. Additionally, this channel and its contents are not intended to be a replacement for proper parenting. Don't allow viewing habits to interfere with personal responsibilities and relationships. Constructive criticism is encouraged, making for better content. Jokes are jokes, albeit immature ones. Please watch responsibly. Thank you. It's colossal. It's stupendous. It's conspicuously incredible. Hurry, hurry, step right up. Hey, Sonny, you want to give it a try? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Conspicuously Incredible Gaming. I am your host, Mike. So I believe this is going to be number eight of Summon Night. Uh, last one didn't quite go all that great, because I had to remember what the hell I had to do, and pretty pissed off over <laughs> my real-life shit. I'm still pissed off now, but... Yeah, I've got, I've got my own plan here, and... <laughs> anyway. Let me go ahead and just get right on into it. Alright. We need to move that just slightly. Now let me open the game. I knew that was going to happen. Come on. Step there. Turn this down on my headset. I can find the control. Alright, I think that works. Well, now that I got that key to go down in the dam. talking all that loud and that thing's by far not ready to be uh, not ready clipping yet as long as I kind of keep it at a, at a medium like this I'm gonna have to work on a better filter or a better something for this damn this damn camera because Yeah, it's always just, uh, turn the brightness down a little bit, turn the contrast up. These settings never stay, though. It, it makes it a little bit better, but yeah, these settings never stay. As soon as I turn, uh, as soon as I exit OBS, gone. All right. So at least now I need to. I know that I need to go back down in, in the dungeon. So. Things are probably going to start getting a little bit tougher. Did I? E.
See, it just still seems like that same damn knife that I've got that I've been using. That dude's knife has just worked out for me better. Yeah, so, uh, while I'm down here, digging around and dicking around in this dungeon, I'm still on this fucking load. They still won't take this shit because they still don't have enough room. I'm starting to get pissed because I could be making money and they may give me a few dollars or whatever here and there for being stuck on this when it wasn't my fault. But it's only going to be maybe a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars a day when I could be making a hell of a lot more than that in a day just driving. It's not going to be enough to make up for it. I'm starting to get pissed. Call him up. Looked like this morning. I called him up. Didn't even get my DM. I got somebody else. Said leave a message. All right. Didn't hear nothing back till I sent a message. A few minutes later, I did get a reply back. But my message was, "Is this place gonna take the the product yet?" You know the answer I got back? Have you checked in yet? If I had checked in yet, I would already know whether or not they were going to take the product or not. So, what's the, you know, you... Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? Did you eat dinner yet? I wouldn't be asking you what's for fucking dinner if I was already there at dinner or then already ate dinner and knew what it was. I just, you know... The logic in that is so fucking stupid. I told her, I said, no, the appointment time that was set for Monday was set at 10 in the morning. It was about 9.15, something like that. I was only, you know, not even 10 miles away. I was only actually like two and a half, three miles away, but the way the damn road and the route and everything, I mean, you know, I was like two and a half miles away by the way the crow flies, but... It only, it only took me like 10 minutes to get over there, so I was getting something to eat and using the bathroom and getting ready to go, and I, you know, hey, you know, are they going to be there? <laughs> are they going to be able to take the product? Or am I going to have to turn back around and come back to this damn truck stop that's going to charge me another $25 to park in their lot because it's the middle of frickin' Atlanta? So I show up, the girl there working, the, the supervisor in that area is like, no, we still don't have the room. I don't know why they keep sending you back. I said, I don't know either, but I'm going to go chew somebody's ear off. And I got back in the truck and I took off about, you know, 30 miles north to get the hell out of Atlanta to a truck stop that didn't charge you per day to stay there. And I'm waiting for him to call me. It's 6.45 in the morning Eastern Time, which means it's 5.45 over there. They ain't going to get up and ready. They ain't going to be in till at least another hour, if not an hour and a half from now, when they finally get in and stuff starts to get going. And I swear to God, if this woman tells... Because they were supposed to on... Was it Saturday? I think or Sunday. That if I showed up on Sunday and they couldn't take it to talk to them about a relay so I could drop this off in the yard somewhere and when they can take it, someone who is around here who needs a short trip or needs a load out or needs a trailer or... Atlanta's a big, big ass place. We got, I know we got plenty of drivers that live here in this area 
that could easily come over and, you know, on their way out after they're getting off a of home time or something. You know, somebody can run that real quick and just empty it off. And then they've got a trailer all ready to go. Wash it out at any one of the places right around there. And then, you know, do whatever they got to do and start, start driving. Oh, that was weird. Look at that. It was straight up. There was no climbing animation or anything. That was weird. Alright. So yeah, I'm not too happy because this is now Tuesday morning. And actually, I should have been empty Saturday morning. I had to skip over this stop and drive to Orlando to take the last stop, then turn right back around, come back up here. This was my second stop out of three. I should have been empty. They're pissing me off because I've been, you know, was down two weeks for the... Two weeks for getting maintenance done on the truck. Which isn't it funny how... <coughs> uh, that's not the coof, I just smoke too much. Isn't it funny how you tell them... I need A, B, and C fixed on this truck. This is what's going on. So they get A and B done. C's kind of half-assed, like, what the hell did they do? And then as you're driving and as you're, you know, going about your day again, your first day or two in the truck, you start noticing that, you know, they started dicking around with some other shit that didn't need to be dicked around with. They replaced my fucking radio. When I told them that the problem wasn't the radio, the radio worked fine. It was just that there's something going on behind the dash that overloads or does something that makes the radio freeze up along with a bunch of other things either stop working or like the low jack in this truck. It'll stop working. And on my, you know, tablet thing where I run my logs at and everything, there'll be a message up says GPS not available. And I'll even talk to them, you know, on the phone and everything. And Well, we don't know where you're at. GPS still says you're, you know, two states back. I don't know what to tell you. I'm where I'm supposed to be or on my way to it. I guess whenever I get stopped for the night, I'll have to hit the kill switch on the floor to cut everything off and let everything kind of whatever capacitors, whatever anything kind of drain out and there's a walkway here almost missed that red lantern so I told him I said it wasn't the radio the radio was just a symptom of what was going on so they replaced my radio. They don't even bother taking the seat, which I should have taken the CD out of it. I don't know why. I'd... The reason why I didn't was because I wanted to leave it in its locked up state to prove to them. Because the last time, one of the last times I mentioned something about it, well, they replaced it when I first got the truck too. So it was, <laughs> it was like, well, that was kind of pointless. But one of those, one of those things where. You tell them, hey, this is going on. And then they look back at you and go, well, we didn't notice anything going on. Radio works just fine. It's like, but you didn't listen to what I said. You didn't listen to a damn thing of what I said. You heard radio, you heard froze up, and then that's all you heard. Hang on, let me... I noticed something a little bit... A little bit up. 
in my voice now because I'm starting to get a little spun up over that. Which is like they only hear certain bits and pieces. I say something about I need the, uh... Oh yeah, this is what gets me. I think I mentioned something about the heater. Some of these bunk heaters, when you when you run them instead of running the engine of the truck, they've got these little, nice little big, you know, boxes or whatever up under there. They basically draw up the diesel fuel, and they light it with some. I think it's called a glow plug or something, or you know, or yeah, maybe I guess it's instead, instead of a spark plug like gas engines, it's a glow plug or something. But what it basically does is it'll draw up the fuel and use some of the electricity to run the fan and stuff like that, but it will actually burn straight diesel fuel, like say a kerosene heater would, to heat the bunk. And when they work, they work. I mean, they will burn your ass out of a vehicle. But they break down constantly. And so it really hasn't been that big of a deal when they put this, um, you know, they've had the bunk here in there for a while. And because I've been running it to keep the AC on, because I had no other you know, means of air conditioner, I figured, well, it ain't going to be no big deal for me to just run the heat, the truck to get the truck heat, too, because the damn thing stopped working. But then they put this APU unit in here, which was supposed to take care of all that. Now, instead of having to run the truck to get air conditioner and running the truck to have heat there's a HVAC unit up under this bunk that does both so when they first put it in it worked for a while then I went back in for it was something or another real quick I think it might have been when I had to have them put new tires on the front because it was they were wearing weird or something and I come back and the fucking heater part of it's been disabled or what why I know it's still summertime but why it took me two weeks of constant bitching and complaining and moaning because my tires were bald and they were starting to go they were starting to lose air pressure I had one that needed to be patched, and another one blew, like, the, the next evening. I'm like, you talk about, you know, squealing in last minute. And when I mentioned something about fixing the heater, the one that the HVAC unit, oh, they did that. They didn't bother, because I told them, don't bother with the, the, the diesel, one the one that burns diesel, or they call it the, the Hespar or Heberspatcher heater. It's a weird fucking name because it never works it you'll, you'll get it to work and it'll work two three days maybe a week or so at the most and then it just stops there's no point in it i hate those things it, so when they work they work good but they rarely ever work ah you son of a bitch fucking get fucking ping pong there There wasn't no stairs there. I thought there was some stairs there. So they do all that. And I get back in the truck and everything. And I turn it on the... I turn on the uh, APU. And I test it out. Air conditioner works just like it did. Flip it over to heat. It takes a little bit. It takes a minute or two to get it going. But it gets going. And I don't need much heat anyway. But I mean, when you're out, it's like, you know, in the teens and the single digits outside, like, you need something to knock off the chill, to knock the damn icicles off your fucking ball sack. So, that works. So I start noticing, I'm like, something's different with this control panel. I'm looking at there's these extra icons and everything that are sitting up top, you know, on the display, like something's been enabled. I've played with this thing enough to know that there's certain options you can use, but to me, what was the point in a lot of them? 
they had this thing set up where if the, the battery barely starts going under a certain voltage, it kicks on. The damn thing was kicking on... I think I mentioned this. I did mention this part. It just... Thinking about it now, I did mention this part yesterday. Or, yeah, well... I think the other day for me. Probably the other day for you guys now. They dicked with a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be dicked with. See, if that ain't bad enough now, my damn, uh... That guy even mentioned that, too. Now it's busted, because the V-belt... ...that runs from the main engine... And ...from the crankshaft... ...that turns the, uh, the cooling fan and the alternator... ...that actually... ...generates the power or regenerates for the, uh, the battery portion of it, you know. It's busted. I need to turn that on a little bit just to keep the battery from dying. So, that's probably, I mean, that's, you hear the reefer back behind me fucking going to town too, but... I'm still holding on to that shit. Fucking three three pallets full of frozen food. Wait a minute, I this I should have gone somewhere, right? Probably screwing all this up. Yeah, eat shit, Pidgey. Pidgeotto. Items. I wanted to use the one in the hell. And I switched weapons, which. Oh well, I'll be right back in one into another battle. Bad doggy. Bad wild haired wolf doggy. A lot more than Snoop. Could be using some of these other weapons. chalk a lot of that up to I'm not really using this weapon so yeah so I had to go in you know and then reset the whole password thing Yeah, I know I've said this yesterday now, thinking about it the other day when I recorded. I'm eventually gonna buy the fucking truck. I'm making payments on it a week. I'm under, you know... Stop dicking with shit that's unnecessary to be fucking with. See, they treat, they treat, treat their drivers like fucking children.
Oh, I didn't even see that down there. Now. I don't think fire is going to help against lightning. Have a little of that, fucker. Oh yeah, I totally missed this area down here. That's why I was. That's why I was decking around like that. So I ain't playing with them anymore. If I got two, I'm gonna go get, you know, go to higher up or somebody later on, because for the last year. For the last year, everything's been screwed up. This is about this time in March last year, when I got back on the truck after being home. And they wanted to send me out to California on 80 over Donner Pass. I had no chains, no way to legally get over that damn mountain. Not to mention the damn, you know, for a good portion of it, the mountain was closed to, to 18 wheelers. And then when you could go on it, you know, you had to have chains. Which I didn't have because they didn't set me up for all that because it's not usually where I go. Set in Nevada for three days. I mean, it wasn't a bad little place, but it was right as all the, the fucking lockdowns and bullshit was starting, so. Like that first night I got there, I was able to eat dinner and have some drinks. And the second day, they acted like they didn't want to serve anybody, or they acted like you know, when it when it when officially everything fucking you know, I'm like ain't this some bullshit? care of that real quick. carrying these weird experiment well they're weird to me but I guess they're specialty in the industry this multi-zone multi-temp trailer where you can it's like it's like a regular trailer but then it's got all these bulkheads in it and instead of one unit it's three separate units three separate control units and you can carry fresh fruit in one side fresh food frozen in the other and Maybe like ambient or like, you know, chocolate or whatever where you got to keep it at maybe like 55, 60 to keep it from melting type stuff in, in another. But none of these trailers worked right. Because they screwed me up with a bunch of other stuff. I was late to one place, had to go to another, had to reschedule this, had to go back to this, go back to that. Then 
Then, because they were specialty and experimental trailers in our fleet, they had to go back toward the Midwest from California, which means they only could carry a certain thing or a certain amount of whatever. But then, like this one place I went to, oh, you can't, you can't keep that trailer. You got to give it off to somebody else because this particular place here don't won't load a multi temp trailer. I'm like, would you guys stop experimenting on me? Like, get this shit worked out with people. Like, you know, make a dedicated fleet and have them do this shit all the time. It's the same thing with these Amazon loads. I went in here already. There was only a handful of shit on this truck to begin with. I took it from upstate New York. And the last, you know, spot was in Orlando, Florida. And I had to unload, probably unload this one too if I ever get to it, unload the truck myself. Luckily they let me use a powered you know, electrical you know, pallet jack. Which I knew how to use because of my last job. factory job. I come down here already, didn't I? Come from down there. The top of this is... That is the... I thought the top was cut off a little bit, but apparently it wasn't. You know, they stuck me with two of them damn trailers, and it was a bunch of this other shit, trying to get back home. As soon as I get back off of Christmas break and everything, there's this place in Kentucky that, oh, well, your load's not ready yet. Well, I said it was, but no, it ain't gonna be ready till probably about Monday morning. Here it is, like, you know, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. I'm like, so I gotta sit here the whole weekend in this fucking place, not driving, not making money. Called up the company. It's not going to be ready yet. You got anything else? Oh no, we, we don't think we got any. We'll, we'll check. No, uh, the, by my favorite. We'll, we'll check and see. We'll we'll get back with you in about a half an hour. We'll let you know. Two and a half hours fucking later, and still no call. Still no message. Still no nothing. Oh, we don't know yet. Planning and you know they done left for the weekend. You gonna pay me anything? Oh, maybe a hundred dollars a day for layover. Yeah, that ain't that ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. That's not my fault. You guys should have never put me on something that was gonna be out that far. Or when I told you. And now this shit. Because somebody higher up in the Amazon logistics chain and our company didn't quite get with one another to make sure what was going on. Oh, well, this is, you know, this is a fairly new account we got. It's only like two months old. Then why are you giving it to your over-the-road people? Why not ask for volunteers for a special dedicated Amazon route or a dedicated Amazon run. You know, give this to your over-the-road people who stay out months at a time. Run, run, run constantly and then basically shove it up their ass when it comes down to this dumb bullshit. I don't want to be 
stopping here, stopping there, unloading this, doing this. No, I want to be fucking run, 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 run. Give me a load, pick it up, drop it off. Turn around, pick up another one, drop it off. Why in the hell do you think I don't? I didn't pick a dedicated route where I get to stick around one route or at home or... You know, they could have paid a flat rate so that when stuff like this happens, they get a guaranteed paycheck no matter what. They get a guaranteed, you know, 1200 or whatever a week. problem is I can make I can make a good deal more than that if I'm given the right tools and the right opportunity to make money and the you know that to, to get stuff I can make oh, not a not ridiculously you know higher amount than that but 1500 isn't unheard of Yet. I've got to take it up the ass on some experimental shit when that's not what I signed up for. I didn't sign up for all that. I just came in through this way, didn't I? I've been down there, so I gotta come back over here. And I'm supposed, like I said, I'm supposed to be going home in two weeks so I can move all of my, you know, move all my stuff to my new house and move in. So all the time I've done taking off with the truck and everything, I got paid a little bit. I didn't get, I didn't get paid a whole lot for the two weeks I was out. And to be honest with you, I had to do, uh, I had to request skip payment of my truck payment in order to make up for some of that because most of that money that they would have given me back for not doing anything would have went right back into paying the truck payment. I've still got to get a... I've still got to get a stove and a hood to go over the stove to install that. I need to get a dryer. I need to get some stuff so I can be doing some painting and, you know... Scraping the walls down and shit. But, you know, as it stands, I probably shouldn't have done that. Because I could have went back up to the surface and... Matter of fact, let me do that. I'm not going to use the save state, but I am going to reset... So I won't use up that damn, uh, <laughs> that damn potion. Oh, like I said, when I get, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to get internet installed in that place. I'm going to have to have a few other people, you know, come around and take a look at everything. Because, you know, I got other... things that need to be done in that place. I'm not even, you know, this time I'm not even going to take off as much time as I usually do. 
just basically a straight week. You know, Monday so I can pick up the truck, drive to where I live now, pick up all my stuff and everything, talk to the accountant Wednesday, hit the bank, close some bank accounts, this and that, whatever, wrap everything up. And by Wednesday afternoon, I need to be driving back toward the house, probably have enough time to pull in a few things be pulling the rest of the shit in on Thursday and if it's raining or it's all fucked up it'll have to be you know done before the end of the business day on Friday then you know Saturday and Sunday to maybe rearrange a few things you know not get too cozy but at least you know put some shit somewhere where I can sit and maybe watch a little TV or have something set up where I can you know play games or you know I have to put my bed on the floor, my mattress, because I don't really want to sit in my bedroom yet because that's the first room I was going to tackle as far as, you know, scraping the paint and repainting. And there ain't no point in setting everything up directly in there just to turn around and tear it all back down later. I figure, you know, pull everything off to the side, just do that room first, then put that in there so that then, you know, later on when I'm working on the rest of the house and I get tired, I could just go and take a shower clean up and everything real good and then my bed is you know bedroom is all ready and waiting for me to just flop down in so i oh, wait a minute there we go now make sure that So I did save, but I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spun up and I'm pissed off over this. And I'll, I'll bet you watch. Now it's quarter after seven, which is quarter after six there. 6.30 is when they all start pouring in, but they usually don't get to you till about 7.30 over there. So it's going to be 8.30 here. It's going to be another hour and something. And I'll be willing to bet you anything. Would you check in back over there? You check in back? I ain't going anywhere. I ain't going anywhere until you either tell me that they, you know for sure, absolutely 100%. I want that manager working there at that to call me. I want her to call me flat up and go, yes, we have room in this freezer. Come down here. We'll unload you. If I don't hear directly from her, I'm not going. You find a drop yard somewhere, or you find somebody who's out of time and needs to wait a day or two to swap with me. I'm not I'm not going any damn where unless I know for sure this trailer's getting unloaded. I ain't playing these games. I ain't playing this run back up there every day. Oh, can you unload me now? Can you I hear there's two or three other damn people waiting the same shit to get shit off of their trailers. What if one of them, because they, you, you know, you know for fucking sure they ain't got nobody in no kind of list or priority or in any kind of order. So you know if they've got spot for, you know, four skids and somebody comes in with four skids, if they'll turn around and unload them real quick and then I show up, oh no, we still ain't got the room. One of your other guys come in here and took up all of our spots today. The DMs ain't going to get with anybody to figure out who went first and who did what. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing this shit. I know exactly what's going to happen. Well, we had room yesterday afternoon, but then one of your people come in and filled up all the spots again. And the DMs ain't getting with nobody. Trying to, you know. Okay, you go at this time, and then you wait a day and you go at this time, and you wait another day and you go at this time. And... No, they're just going to... Oh, just go up there and see if they're on. Why? Wasting gas, wasting time, wasting money, putting me on the clock and everything. When I'm not even going to go anywhere, just to turn around and go back. Like I said, having the fucking closest damn fucking truck stop, they charge you twenty-five dollars to stay for a whole day. 
Oh, you can buy $25 worth of merch or, you know, eat at the restaurant or whatever and, you know, whatever the receipts in there add up to $25. I got plenty of food in this truck. I got plenty of shit to eat on and fuck around with. Why do I need... You know, I, I don't eat that... I, you know, I'm, I'm big. I eat, you know... I eat kind of heavy. I eat, you know... I by far don't eat the most healthiest shit. I eat a lot of rich, you know, rich foods, a lot of sugary shit. I don't move around a whole lot, but there's only so much you know, energy drinks for later. And you know, I really don't drink these a whole lot because I've got coffee and I've, you know... I don't mean, I mean these sugary canned drinks, like, you know. I got like this, you know, powdered stuff or whatever, the, you know, that's a drink mix kind of thing. I got the, the Mio's you can spring in, you know, bottle water, a squirt or two in. I've got, you know, Jet Alert No-Dose, where if I just want to take a capsule with some caffeine, like, I don't usually drink these. But I'm in there trying to buy shit to go up to $25 to at least just, I get something in my hand for parking there. And after like two, three days of that shit, it's like, you know, I'm, no, I'm, I want to park somewhere where the parking is free. And you figure, you figure this shit out, because I just drive the truck. like it's soured or it's gone off a little bit. Maybe it's that artificial sugar in it. It's not exactly cane sugar and it's not exactly high fructose either. It's a... Uh... Like a lot of the Mio and the stuff like that has like sucralose and you know, that's not bad. I've gotten used to the taste, but... It, def it definitely has that artificial sweetener flavor in it. I like the Java monsters better. I got still got two of them. So I had to like four of them and a couple of bologna sandwiches, you know, fried bologna sandwiches and some beefy mac and which I ate on them, you know, all throughout the day and even had a bologna sandwich this morning to eat. But it's like I've got a cooler full of frozen food in here. I've got a refrigerator full of like, eggs and cheese and yeah, well, I did have milk, but I had to had to drink it up and everything, so it wouldn't go bad. But I got MREs up there. I've got food I've canned. I got canned chili and canned soup. I got bread and lunch meat, bagels and tortillas. I can wrap up lunch, like lunch meat and cheese and tortillas, and you know, put a little sauce in them or whatever, and roll them up, put them, toast them on a George Foreman grill. steak I had at the truck stop yesterday or the other day was pretty damn good too but it's just like shit I've done already been here so I'm roaming through this damn through this labyrinth for nothing now not for nothing, but I gotta find the find the hole to hit to get out of here. So let's at least do that. Still gonna, I knew I was gonna get hit before I got off of there. And see now if they do do anything with it, it's gonna be later on this afternoon. If I do drop it off or swap it, then they're gonna have me pick up something early in the afternoon. 
it's going to be too early by the time I actually go to pick it up so that when I do end up to stop driving, it's going to be like midnight, 1 o'clock. You can't find a parking spot that late at night. It's next to fucking impossible. And a lot of these truck stops stopped honoring the whole reserve parking thing a long time ago. I won't be, you know, well, I heard the one excuse I was, well, because of COVID, we can't go out there and... bother anybody and run the risk of coming in contact with anybody. I'm like, then what's the point? What's the point? Fucking paint over that shit, pull them fucking signs up for the reserve park and take that shit off your website. If you're not going to honor it, don't leave it there as an option for anybody to buy. The whole point of a reserve parking spot is that if you know you're going to get there way late in the evening when it's hard to find a spot, you pay $12, $15 or whatever to the place to hold that spot for you. So that when you get there, you have a guaranteed spot to park. That's the whole point of reserved parking. It's a great concept if they'll honor it. But most of the time, they don't. Am I missing something here? In the last damn room I was in, it was... Yeah, it just... Then the other place, so it was only... There's only a few of us working here and we can't go out for safety reasons. What do you mean safety reasons? How hard is it to knock on the door and go, hey, excuse me, if you don't have a reserve ticket or you're not on this list, you gotta move. Like, we've got paying customers here. And if they say, well, I ain't fucking moving, take their license plate and their DOT number down and their truck color and all that and just call the cops and have them tow the shit or, you know, have them deal with it. Oh no, well it's only us two women here, and women this and women that, and we can't, because we're afraid of me. We don't know what's going to happen, and me, 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 me. I said, well then what's the fucking point? You guys are about as useful as tits on a log then. <coughs> if you're not going to honor this shit, then stop having it up there for reserve. If you are going to honor this shit, and that's what you're that afraid of, why don't you hire another person on? You got another person or another, a male, if that's what you, a male. I told her, but you know, isn't this fucking 2020? This was like a late, mid, mid, late last year. This fucking 2020? Isn't this current fucking year? You know? Can't you women do everything and anything a man can do and fucking better in high heels, pregnant, underwater, walking backwards with a fucking broomstick in your ass? You know, sweeping the floor at the same time behind you? Like, I thought anything we could do, you can do ten times better. Why now all of a sudden do you want the special treatment? You know, the, the special consideration. Go out there and figure out who ain't supposed to be in there and fucking tell them to fucking move. I wish I had my peace on me. You want me to go out there with you? I'll stand right. I'll stand right there behind you. So shit pops off. I'll put one in his fucking forehead. And look, it's not like that shit never fucking happens because it does fucking happen. A couple years ago, there was a uh, woman got arrested. Woman truck driver got arrested. For illegally and recklessly discharging a weapon in a truck stop area because somebody ugh, excuse me, somebody I think it was just another driver. 
just knocked on her door and was like, hey, you know, can you move? I can't get out. Nobody can get out, this and that. And the situation escalated to the point she pulled out her gun, unloaded the whole damn mag, didn't hit shit. Like, are you fucking kidding me? To me, that just shows you some people don't need don't need guns. It also shows you women can't hit shit. Generally. There's a lot of redneck women out there and everything. To shoot the damn ticks off a dog's ass. This woman, this woman looked like of the group of people that likes to hold the gun sideways, let's just say. I don't know if that's how she held it, but in pop culture, when you come across a certain group who like to use guns all the time, that certain group that likes to hold it cocked sideways, Let's just say the same ones that hold their phone straight up and down when they record shit too. It's you know, no landscape on the phone and upright on your weapon, not weapon and phone, phone and weapon. So I can't, you know, I, I hate, I hate that shit. Every damn video is in portrait mode. What the hell am I missing here? So I'm in the 18th floor. Look, I don't know what the situation is. I still want to know the exact rules and regulations for carrying a firearm on a commercial motor vehicle because... From what I remember, I don't remember the woman being charged with having a firearm on a commercial motor vehicle. What she got charged with was reckless discharge. And, you know, reckless endangerment. She didn't get charged with possession you know, of, of a firearm on a commercial motor vehicle. That's one of the other reasons why I had to get up and leave Atlanta. You know, directly in that area, right in the city limits. I don't feel comfortable out there in big cities like that for very long. You know, 
I'll get in and do my business, get out. Okay, I'm missing something here. I'm missing like a spot to get in the water. I know I've at least got this floor and maybe two more before I get hung up. Possibly. feel very comfortable in big cities like that. I mean, there's even that truck stop that I like to go to in Chicago all the time, but... or in the Chicago area. It's technically Bolingbroke. You know what? Even though that is a pay area, it's like $12 a night or something... I mean, the area, actually, it's... I've never... I've never ever had a problem there. The worst problem I've ever had at that place was somebody wanting to put them cards or them stickers... Well, not stickers, but them cards and little flyers for their trucking company or whatever like that, you know, on your truck window sometimes. And that's like, fucking, you know... You take that and you throw it away. I mean, they ain't not going to beat on your truck, but... I was like fucking... Either Dallas or Houston or something one time. And I got hit up three times getting out of the fucking truck to go take a shit. Being hit up for money. Hey man, you got something? Uh, I'm getting hungry, I can eat it. What? This was one dude in Chicago was funny as fuck. This wasn't even Bolingbroke, you know, it was before I, before I decided I don't give a fuck how far away I am, I am from that place, if I'm in that area, I'm going to that damn truck stop. I just parked wherever, wherever I could get in. This dude, same dude twice in the afternoon. First day is like, you know, or the first time, it, Hey man, you got a couple dollars on you, man. I can get something to eat, man. I'm hungry. I ain't had nothing all day, and I'm, you know, I'm like a dude, you know, I ain't got no which I, I did. I, I, I don't carry cash on me. I really don't. I should more because there's sometimes there's places where they, you know, they want for unloading fee, or sometimes you need, you know, ten, fifteen in cash or see this shit right here. This fucking bullshit. Somebody probably trying to run around him. Mm hmm. Fucking knock that shit off. People are still trying to fucking sleep out here. See these motherfuckers trying to cram the fuck in here. And they're going to end up hitting one another. And they're gonna call the fucking cops, come out here and fucking check their shit. And now here comes somebody else trying to run around the other side of them. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck y'all doing, man. Y'all got no clue what the fuck you're doing. And see, this is still far enough away from the fucking major city. 
but it's still goddamn close enough. This dude don't even know what the hell he's doing. I mean, he's still looking over at this. Still looking over at this goddamn truck like a fucking yeah, asshole. See, I don't know what he's doing, but everybody's fucking passing him up. He's trying to back into a spot or back into that fucking garage. I think I didn't hit a brick wall over here. I don't... Shot that by a son of a bitch. Ow, you fuckhead. He's still fucking sitting there. See, you know, it's just these, a lot of these assholes can't fucking wait either. Can't let anybody fucking back up or back into a place. This truck stop is built so fucked up too. All the way around the fucking lot in order to get to where you fuck to get fuel. And so the only way to get in the right way to get fuel was to have to go all the way through the fucking lot, past the garage, and do this big fucking loop to get around to get into the right way. He is trying to back into that garage or something, I guess. I don't know. So this is him at the fucking 15th floor. Wasn't down that way, was it? No, nah, but back to that Chicago story. He said, man, I'm hungry, man. You got, you know, you give me a couple of dollars, get something to eat. I said, man, I don't carry cash on me and everything. I said, if you want something to eat, I can get you, like, a, you know, give you a can of soup. And hell, I can even heat it up for you on a can of chili or, you know, if you want an MRE. The hell's an MRE? Well, it was, you know... Meals they give the soldiers, military soldiers, they pack real good, they keep a long time. You know, quick snack, you know, whatever, like, you know, all right, make you something, make you a sandwich. I don't want to fuck you and shit like that. So, well, you obviously must not be that hungry then. He come back about, you know, two hours later with, like, perfume and jewelry and shit like that and cologne. Hey, man, you don't want nothing you smell good? Yeah, girl, man, I'll get you this, man. You want to? So, dude, I, I don't buy that shit for myself. I barely, I, I barely wear cologne and shit. You know, I wear underarm deodorant and everything, keep that down. But I mean, I, I barely, I don't, I don't wear. If I do, it's you know. And I'm, you know, never really, I don't know. I can't really say that because when I first heard about it and it first come out, the, the whole axe shit, I kind of fell into that hype too of, oh yeah, they say women say it smells good. And it, it just got to where, because I've been trying so many different deodorants over the years when I was, you know, when I was younger, could 
never ever seemed to find anything that worked for me like it needed to. Which I know now if I look at the ingredients I could probably change brands no problem. But it's just kind of one of those things that I found something that worked for me and I stuck with it. And I've bought the, uh, you know, the deodorant sprays from time to time. And from time to time, I'll put a little bit of that on. But, look, I've got... I've got a bottle of fucking... A half a bottle of fucking Stetson cologne my mom bought me. Well, it was, it was full when she gave it to me, but... She bought that goddamn shit in, like, fucking 95, 96. There's still a half a bottle of that shit. I got fucking... Well, English leather, and I think black suede still, or no, I think that bottle broke, actually. What the fuck's that other goddamn one? That other cowboy fucking one. There's a bunch of Avon shit my mom fucking bought from somebody years ago. This is the 16th floor. So something's the fuck on the 15th floor. It's not here. Not here. Wild, wild country. I think I still have some of that. I got this shit somebody bought me damn near 20 years ago. Fucking 2001 Christmas or something like that. 2002. Called New Musk. It's not that bad, but I'm not really a Musk type person. I think I've still got a bottle of... What the hell's that other shit fucking women go fucking crazy over? The fucking... Not Drakkar, although I have like a knockoff version of that shit. Which, you know, it, it wasn't bad, but... I'll fucking think of it here in a minute. The point is, most of that shit, most of that, those bottles of cologne and everything that I have... I've had for at least over 10, if not 15 years. I don't wear that shit. Are you talking about like, you know, whatever gold or silver chain and this and that and... Oh, you ain't got a girl you won't smell good for? So first of all, I don't wear that shit anyway. Second of all, I don't give a fuck about being with anybody anyway. A truck driver out here trying to make fucking money. What do I need a wife and kids and fucking girlfriend and all that shit for? I like how a lot of people, when they want to fucking argue with the, Oh, so you want a boyfriend? No, I you know, did not say that, but... Whatever, I mean... Look, I mean, at this point in my life... It's not even a fetish kind of thing. I mean... And I'm not trying to soften up my shit for this whole, you know woke garbage bullshit going on nowadays, but the thing is, if you if you find somebody you really enjoy being with and enjoy hanging out with, there's a, a lot of something there. Then, I mean, it really kind of shouldn't matter. The thing is, you know, I don't, I don't need the procreating angle. I don't need, I don't even need the uh, companionship angle. Oh. This is the 15th. I totally fucking skipped the 15th floor. Totally walked over that shit. So whatever it is I'm looking for is supposed to be on this fucking floor. 
I know I'm running over a little bit more, but I want to... Between my talking and... I did try to play a little bit this time, though, more than just dicking around. But, you know... I know that, you know, that's good. what I what I said is going to get twisted and construed, and, it, you know, I, I've, I've heard it all, I've been through it, and it don't even fucking bother me anymore, man. Oh, what you, well, you, you date a guy, you date a guy. It ain't as simple as, oh, you date a guy, but, you know. With a lot of people nowadays, it's just, oh, for the, do it for the experience, and do it for the, because why not, and just run wide open, and, no. The thing is, I ain't even gonna date another fucking woman. Unless there's truly fucking something there, and I mean, not that, you know, I, I'm, I'm old enough now to at least partially fucking know better. Like, she, she has to meet every single one of my criteria, I'm sorry, and it ain't even this whole, who oh, beggars can't be choosers, well, who's over here begging? I ain't begging for shit. Yes, it would be nice. It would be, I mean, well, in my situation now, I can't eat steak every day. I was gonna say, it'd be nice if I could eat steak every day, if I could fucking afford it, but... Fuck with you. I gotta, I gotta fucking afford steak every goddamn day now. But back in the day, I didn't fucking complain about it. I can't eat steak every day. So what? I have some fucking hamburger helper. I fucking eat a bologna sandwich. I fucking, you know. So? Nice to have a steak every day, but... Well, see, I did get the core parts. Well, something's going on. I'm gonna have to fucking resurface or something. Get back up to the top, because... I mean, and to be honest, and this is, you know, this is one of the complaints women have about men. And then when somebody like me actually opens their mouth and fucking admits it, then all of a sudden, you know, I, I hate women for some reason. It's like, when I, when I think about being a, with a woman in a relationship, or I think that I want to be in a relationship with a woman... When I break everything down into its core parts, I really just realize that I... I want sex. And if that's all, you know, a relationship's gonna be is just empty, meaningless, mindful, you know, mindless, animalistic, you know, population, then... Why don't I just get 200 bucks and go talk to a professional, you know? Because you run the risk of diseases and all that other shit, getting caught up in a bunch of other shit, too. That you don't want either, I mean. I 
You don't want a false accusation. You don't want a child that you can't get rid of. You don't want a disease you can't get rid of. This person would have to actually literally fucking change my life. For the good, not, you know... In a never-ending rash, you know, seeping rash kind of way that needs ointment and cream every fucking day kind of, kind of changing my life. You know, nothing says change my life like a wet seeping rash. It's just, I can't, I can't fucking trust anybody, really. I've already been over there. I can't trust anybody to have... ...the interest of the couple in mind, and not the interest of their own ass in mind. And that's nearly every woman I've ever dated. It's whatever she was getting out of it. Whatever she, you know, however she felt. Well, so that door is locked, too. Alright, well. I mean, I've, I've heard stories of, you know, couples kind of falling into some hard times, and somebody actually steps up and helps for a while, and, you know, you never hear any more of, man, you know, we were just so broke and poor, we just had to, you know, eat what we could eat, and live with what we can live with, and it was great because we had each other, and, you know, now we're stronger and everything, I no. The moment something fucking starts going wrong, the moment times get a little lean, people want to fucking leave. People want to start accusing people, you just don't do anything for me, you just don't... You know, because it's supposed to be about all working together and, you know... Was it him that I was supposed to fucking talk to, or was it... It was fucking Dingus, and... God damn. It was fucking Dingus on the other end of fucking town over here. And I mean, you know... There's, there's been a couple of commercials on TV here lately, especially that whatever that Credit Karma one was. Where, like, that couple's living in that studio apartment, and, like, she's sitting on his shoulders, some shit, up working on her computer while he's fucking sitting down on his, the other side, and, like, he's in the shower while he's fucking flipping bacon and this and that, and they're, like, crawling all over each other to fucking... That never fucking happens in real life. You know that woman to be bitching and complaining how, how bad of a, you know, how piss poor of a fucking man that motherfucker was for not getting them a fucking house somewhere. Instead of working together and actually, you know, that shit hardly ever happens. At least you don't see it anymore. I mean, shit, he already gave me the plans to this motherfucker, didn't he? outside. Let me make this fucking weapon. Hope 
hopefully it's better than what I've got. But I guess I'll uh, whoop up on these fucking twins in the next video. Yeah, I'm just so done with bullshit and everything, and the problem is, I'm not done with this bullshit in a Facebook way, where, you know, another six months or so later, these people who walk around, hey, I'm done with this bullshit, six months later, they're into the same bullshit again, wondering why their lives are, you know, never go the way they want them to. You know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, you know. It used to be a certain way and think a certain way. I was told to act this way and to do this and whatever, to, you know, to be with a woman, to get with a woman, to be in a relationship, whatever, and none of that ever worked. And I'm not even changing up my tactics hoping I'll get a woman. It's like I've done spent most of my time and energy wasting a lot of my time in my 20s on shit like that when I should have been worried about, you know, building up better career, but learning more things, doing more things. It was a lot of misplaced energy. Hopefully now this one will actually, it's slightly better, with better defense, better agility, better durability. Alright. Oh, wait a minute, let me go over here and fucking do the do. There we go. So now I made that sword. So I guess as good a time as any, because it's almost crawling up on an hour and a half, and I've done been bitching enough. I'll get this one to start uploading, and then I will, um... And then I shall, uh... Shit. Start another one, at least get another one in the can, because all this off and on shit, like, I didn't even think I was going to be... I barely got the last one out. I think it was, what, the last one or one of the other ones I did? I actually had to record it before I left and then had to leave my laptop and my phone back here in the back on with my phone connected, you know, through the, the tethering and have it uploading like at midnight so that it would be ready in the morning, you know, before the morning came. I hate doing that, but that was about the only way I could get that bitch out. So all this off and on stop and go shit, I'm going to have to, you know, maybe record a few more. I think I got to go in real quick and use the bathroom, but. Anyway.
during this uh, next one, they'll probably be calling me. You'll probably hear the damn phone go off. And... I don't know. It's fucking 8.05, which is 7.05 over there, so they're going to... Yeah, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't playing with them. All right, so thank you all for watching. I will uh, I'll see you all a little bit later, all right? This has been Conspicuously Incredible Gaming with your host, Mike. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share with your friends, do all the things. It really helps. Also, check out the links below for when I do stream, the places I do stream, and I'm still working on, I keep saying it, well, the website I'm going to need to be working on, too, but all the places I'm going to be archiving stuff to, and I got the website I'm still trying to work on, you probably ain't seen anything yet on it, and, uh, yeah, there's Streamlabs, if you like to donate a dollar or two, there's also Discord, you can join in and everything, and, you know, be part of what we're doing, and, you know, get notified when I post stuff, so. That being said, thank you all for watching, take care, and have a good four. Conspicuously Incredible Gaming is a Conspicuously Incredible production. Conspicuouslyincredible.com